Alrighty, day three. Here at the range, shooting the M14A4. He's all scoped up, ready to go. Getting everything situated. I need to come down like one click. <clears throat> We got the scope on there. We're just putting on the final touches. So I came down one click. Could have been two. Because sometimes the little clicks miss out and I don't hear them. Or fill them in my, with my uh, glove or through the turret. So this is too low. I'll go back up. One. I think them are in the diamond. Then we're hitting about the same spot, so. One, two, I came down two clicks that time. I'll shoot these last three here, and then wherever it's at, I'll leave it. 
because I don't I have to get more of this uh, Atomic 308 because this shoots this shit better than any of the other factory I've got this particular my M14A4 uh, I need to test some of this out in the M1A loaded but the M14A4 absolutely freaking loves Atomic 308 with uh, 168 grain bullet <laughs> Just let dyslexia Dyslexia That was right in the diamond, them last three. So I think it's right where it's at. I'll leave it there. And if that's holding where I want, I'll lock the zero locks on it. And be good to go. Hell yeah. Alrighty. My dad is shooting his Remington 700 uh, Classic 308 next to me. And I am going to try three shots of this 762 by 51 millimeter full metal jacket boat tail Agula ammo and see if my M14A4 likes it. The box got wet. That's always fun. That'll be coming apart here soon. In a disaster near me. Hopefully not near you. Wherever you guys are viewing from. Now, uh, I'm going to hold big center diamond with M14A4 here. Okay. Well, that's two right next to each other. Agula don't shoot too damn bad. It actually shoots that pretty good too. <clears throat> Alright. So 
Not barring any waiting time. Uh, I have to go down and mark each ones, uh, the different types of ammo, but I may as well keep the ammo testing going here and shoot some uh, 308 Igman. Uh, 147 grain full metal jacket. Now this stuff is from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I did a video on this earlier. And I think I'll go ahead and say that uh, the Igula is from Mexico, I do believe. Let me see. Yeah, made in Mexico. So this is Mexican. This is Bosnian. Let's see if this M80 ball from Bosnia does any good out of the M14A4. Almost said A3. <laughs> Nomenclature. Alright. Three shots. To keep in tradition. Going to the top right diamond or top left diamond for this. Well, I can't. See. Oh, uh, there it is. My barrel's getting hot, I'm getting heat mirage. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go get that target and mark it up here real quick. <sighs> Them Igila acted a bit. Not Igila, but them Igna. Did some crazy shit. Uh, now I don't know if that was me or if that was the gun. May have been the gun heating up. I don't know. I'll look at the target better. Let me turn my illumination off. Alright. Time to investigate the target. All right, folks. Plus, come by 51 millimeter here. I got a lot to cover in a short time to do it. My camera is about to die. As you can see, here is the M14A4 in its quasi final form with the Sig Tango MSR 1 to 6 LVPO on top. Uh, I will say right away, real quick, that I am 
unfortunately going to have to get a different cheek riser because this one sits far too high off of the buttstock so in the meantime this is how it will be with the 1.5 35 height one piece SPR style scope mount that it comes with on an AR-15 this would be perfect on any of my ARs I got this would be a perfect setup but this scope mount just sits a wee too bit high so I'm either going to go through Badger Ordnance or um, that other one I can't remember the name of it but the either 1.3 or 1.2 height scope rail to try and bring this closer to the receiver and thus bringing it clo further down to the buffer tube but uh, show you some groups here from the other day um, this was when I was shooting Atomic 308 I kind of just circled the whole encompassing thing this was my last group right here you know three shots when I brought it down two more clicks I didn't measure that because this is more encompassing just to get it on paper but I did measure this right here and this turned out to be a 1.25 MOA group with Atomic 308 168 grain hollow point boat tails so that's really damn good with factory ammo. Then over here was a Gula 308. This was, turned out, these two shots here, I don't know where the third one went to. It went off into the wild blue yonder. The .75 MOA. Um, and then a Gula, or not a Gula, Igman. I don't know what happened with Igman. Igman performs kind of like how ZQI did in my uh, M1A loaded. So this stuff is just going to be planking ammo. I mean, I will try. I will get out. I've got enough of it here. I've got over a hundred rounds of Igman sitting right here, Igman 308, in this case. And uh, I, next weekend or whenever I get back to the range, I'm definitely going to try and get back out and do some actual serious testing with this because this week um. Mainly because this has been the first time in a while I've shot a gun, and two, my neck is kind of uh, messed up, and having to wrench my head up against this. I was kind of fatigued there by that third day, because I'd been shooting when I did all the ammo testing. We'd been out shooting quite a bit the day before that, and I've got all the videos. I'm gonna have to. Up, I'm gonna be uploading for a few days at least. Um, but you know, I'm I'm pretty fatigued. <laughs> I had fun. It was all fun, but I, I was. I'm tired, and by that third day, I was shooting this. That's I. You could see I started pulling shots because there's no way that that had to be me. There's no way the the gun did that. I mean, these are just 147 grain full metal jacket M80 ball. And you go from tight groups like this to that. That had to be me. So I'm going to blame myself for that last group with Eggman. So I'm not even going to count that. I just can't said what the ammo was. But this right here, this had to be me. So don't take... I'm not going to bad mouth or diss Eggman because... I haven't even had the chance to really try it out, but I will say that putting this LVPO on my M14A4, as I have so belovingly dubbed it, is probably one of the best things you could do for an M14 type rifle if you're wanting it to be a close range DMR setup. Because uh, like my other M14, it's got a Redfield Revolution 4 to 12 on it. So that's going to be, I'm looking at different scopes for it, but since this one now kind of fits the DMR role, or close range battle rifle, which would be a CRBR if you would want to call it that, but <clears throat> or medium range battle rifle, but the potential to reach out to distance. Um, that other one I'm going to dedicate it now more to the sniping role, because I in the past... I had been having the loaded kind of in between because you know it's semi automatic and I had like a quasi low power scope, four power to 12, you know. <clears throat> but now, <clears throat> with this one kind of filling that niche of a 
shorter distance high powered rifle you know medium range long range 18 inch barrel the world's my least year with this bad boy but the other one I'm going to set it I'm going to set it up primarily for long distance I'm not done with it in any capacity I'm just been focusing on this and the other ones as you can see and uh, a project rifle and I'm just getting it to where I wanted to have a close range M14 <clears throat> I can still use this in the close range capacity because that one power I will have to eventually end up doing a full on review of this scope because the one power is pretty damn good as you can see there we put the illumination on I'm trying to get the eye box to filter in. I know this is sideways. I apologize. <clears throat> My bad. <laughs> I'm being. But yeah, there's the radical. You've all seen it. But yeah, that's a. Uh, this is a very good upgrade for any M14. Even if you were to just forsake the whole one piece mount altogether and go with 30 millimeter rails, individual rings, I can say without a doubt this is probably one of the best LVPOs you could get for an M14 because it's impressed the hell out of me. The windage and elevation on this is unreal. It's you got so much to work with. So by far, my first impressions right now, because my camera's dying, is it's a for this type of rifle, an M14, even an AR-10, you're good to go. So anyway, guys, this has been Pliskin by 51 millimeter. I've got the M14A4, and it's entering its final stages. Next will be just. You know, getting a lower scope mount and adding a little bit of more things. And then it'll be nothing but the ammo testing from there on, baby. So until then, guys, stay tuned. This has been Pliskin. Catch you all in the next video. Peace.